Welcome to our Eucharistic celebration. Today is October 9. We are now on the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We also celebrate today Indigenous People Sunday and Extreme Poverty Sunday. Our sponsors for this Mass are the Parish Pastoral Council, Eucharistic Ministers of the Holy Eucharist, and Couples for Christ. Our Mass presider is Reverend Father Joni Acaso. Please all stand and join the choir in singing our entrance hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to, to Almighty God, God, and, and to, to you, my brothers and sisters, sisters that, that I have, have greatly sinned. sinned. In, in my thoughts and in my words, words in what, what I have done, and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
glory to God in the highest. Papuri sa Diyos, papuri sa Diyos, sa kaitaasan, papuri sa Diyos, papuri sa Diyos, papuri sa Diyos, sa kaitaasan. Papuri sa Diyos, sa lupa'y kapayapaan, sa mga taong pinalutan niya. Pinukuli ka namin, inarangal ka namin, sinasamba ka namin, Pinakuli ka namin Papuli sa Diyos Papuli sa Diyos Sa kahitaasan Papuli sa Diyos Sa iyong natirang ating kabukiran Parinong Diyos, parinong langit, siya sa mga kapangyarihan, sana ka, Panginoong Eskristo, kung na na, Panginoong Diyos, kontera ng Diyos, ama, Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. 
na a man, a Syrian and a foreigner, is cured of leprosy and gratefully honors the God of Israel. He reminds us of the Samaritan leper in the Gospel. A reading from the second book of Kings. Naaman went down and plunged into the Jordan seven times at the word of Elisha, the man of God. His flesh became again like the flesh of a little kid, and he was clean of his leprosy. Naaman returned with his whole retinue to the man of God. On his arrival, he stood before Elisha and said, Now I know that there is no God in all earth except in Israel. Please accept a gift from your servant. Elisha replied, As the Lord lives, whom shall I serve? I will not take it. And despite Naaman's urging, he still refused. Naaman said, If you will not accept, please let me, your servant, have two mule loads of earth, for I will no longer offer holocaust or sacrifice to any other god except to the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his own holy arm. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has made his salvation known. In the sight of all of the nations, he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness towards the house of Israel. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song, sing praise. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Apostle Paul says that the salvation brought about by the death and resurrection of Christ Jesus is the culmination of all God's gifts. Gratitude prompts us to be loyal to Jesus to the end. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, remember Jesus Christ raised from the dead a descendant of David. Such is my gospel for which I am suffering, even to the point of chains, like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I bear with everything for the sake of those who are chosen, so that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus together with eternal glory. This saying is trustworthy. If we have died with him, we shall also live with him. If we persevere, we shall also reign with him. But if we deny him, he will deny us. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To honor the Holy Gospel, please rise. In all circumstances, give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Amen. 
your spirit from the holy gospel according to saint luke glory to you o lord as jesus continued his journey to jerusalem he traveled through samaria and galilee as he was entering a village Ten lepers met him. They stood at a distance from him and raised their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priest. As they were going, they were cleansed. And one of them, realizing he had been healed, returned glorifying God in a loud voice. And he fell at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus said in reply, Ten were cleansed. Were they not? Where are the other nine? Has none but this foreigner returned to give thanks to God? Then he said to him, Stand up and go. Your faith has saved you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Leprosy during the time of Jesus was a dreadful disease. There was no known cure for it and so those people infected with leprosy were already considered the walking dead and they had to be separated from the community they shall be placed in seclusion we have in today's readings however two instances of cures of this dreaded disease the first one is the healing of Naaman from Syria in our first reading. And in the Gospel reading, we have the healing of the ten lepers by Jesus. And one of them was a Samaritan. Ten lepers had their skin cured by Jesus, but only one of them was cured in his soul. Why? Because only one, the Samaritan, that gift of healing and his gratitude for it brought him back to Jesus to say thank you to him, to give him thanks. There is so much emphasis of rights, individual right as a human being these days. We feel that we have a right to all blessings. Don't I have a right to be happy? Don't I have a right to good health? Don't I have a right to a long life? But are these really rights or are they gifts and blessings? The nine lepers cured by Jesus in today's gospel did not care to come back and thank Jesus. You know why? Because they were Jews. And Jews considered God's gifts as their privilege for being the chosen people of God. That from their point, point of view, what God gives them or what they receive from God is what God owes them. That they believe that after they, they externally perform the requirements and the precepts of the law and did what God commanded, God is owed to bless and reward them. But that is not the case. We don't have any right 
to make demands from God. We have no claim on God. What God gives is always a gracious gifts. Sometimes, however, like the nine lepers in the gospel, we also think that because we are faithful to our personal devotion, we pray regularly, we go to church every Sunday, we do novenas, we offer mass intentions, and because we strive to live an upright and morally righteous life, we also think that God is obliged to bless us, to do favors to us, to grant our prayers. We also think that God is owed to spare us from problems, difficulties, and trials. Thus, when bad things happen to us, when we encounter problems and difficulties in life, our usual question is, Lord, what wrong did I do? What sin did I commit? And sometimes we would even want to dictate God what to do with our problems, how to solve our problems, what shall He do with our life, and when shall He answer our prayers. That in our prayer, we want God to do things our way. We want God to agree on our demands. And so some of us abandon the practice of prayer because we feel that nothing happens in our prayer. And God does not seem to grant our prayer requests. This kind of attitude reflects the attitude of Naaman in our first reading. Naaman has shown, uh, his story is shown in the second book of Kings, which lead up to today's first reading, that Naaman was the commander of the king of Syria, army's commander, and hoping that he would be cured of his leprosy by the prophet of Israel, the prophet Elisha, he went to him and he brought with him gifts of silver, gold, and precious garments, thinking that he would be given VIP treatment. Elisha, however, the prophet, did not even go out for him. The prophet simply sent a messenger to him, telling him, in order for you to be cured, all you have to do is go to the Jordan River and wash yourself seven times and you will be healed. This response, this treatment left Naaman deeply offended, indignant, and he decided to go back to Syria because things had not gone according to his expectation, according to his plan. He expected the prophet Elisha to come out and wave his hand over and cure the leprous portion of his body, but Elisa the prophet did not go out. And so, when he was about to he was about to go home upset, his servants point out to him the simplicity of the prophet's requirement. All you have to do in order for you to be cured is wash yourself seven times in the river Jordan. And Naaman the Syrian was persuaded and he carried out the instruction of the prophet and thus he was cured. And yet, if we try to think of it, how often do we behave precisely in the same way? That sometimes we also question, why do I go to church when I can worship God at home or anywhere I want? Why do I confess my sins to the priest when I can tell them directly to God and say, I am sorry. That was also the attitude of those people who were privileged to see Jesus face to face and listen to his preaching. Philip the Apostle, for instance, once questioned Jesus. He told him, Lord, why do you just keep on talking to us about the Father? Why don't you just show us the Father himself? And when Jesus began to teach about the Eucharist, those people who considered themselves as his faithful followers also questioned him. Why did he keep on talking about eating his flesh and drinking his blood? That is intolerable. Who can accept it? And that is the initial 
attitude and reaction of Naaman the Syrian. Good for him. He changed his mind. He followed the instruction of the prophet. He got healed. And now he came back to thank the prophet, Prophet Elisa. That this simply reminds us that indeed God's way is not our way. God always does things in his own time, in his own way. And God calls us to have faith in him, on his condition, and not on ours. And we must stop treating God as a kind of puppet that should react the desired way when we pull the right strings and accept the will of God in the spirit of adoration. When we seek favor from God, we must do with prayer and thanksgiving. Because God answers our prayer, our prayer for help. Though it might not be the same in the same way as we would wish, but God answers our prayer according to His plan and according to what is best for us. Therefore, we must make it a habit, brothers and sisters, especially during the celebration of the Mass, to praise and thank God for all His blessing. But do we notice the blessings of God in our life? You know, we can easily lose a sense of gratitude for everything that had been given to us. When we come to church, we bring with us our need and our burden as we should, but sometimes we forget to thank the Lord for all His blessing, for all the blessings He extended to us. Do we thank God for instance for our parents who gave us life, food, clothing, shelter, education, and love, which gave us a sense of self-worth that contrary to the claim of a young party list representative that allegedly children owed nothing to their children. Because according to her, the only role of parents to the children is to give birth to them. After giving birth to their children, pagkatapos di umanong dumaan sa sinapupunan ng nanay ang mga anak, hindi ho sila nagkakautang ng loob sa ina. Because hindi naman nila ginusto o desisyon na sila ay mailawal. The commandment of God, however, is very clear. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 5, verse 16, God says, If you want your life to go well, if you want to have a long life in this world, honor your father and your mother. And this was reiterated by St. Paul in his letter to the Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 1 to 3. St. Paul says, Obey your parents because that is the right thing to do. As God commanded us to honor our parents, in order for us that our life may go well, that we may have a long life in this world. Brothers and sisters, do all the blessings that we receive, like the Samaritan's cure, bring us closer to God? Or like the other nine, we just take them for granted. The prayer of gratitude, the prayer of, of thanksgiving, widens our vision of the presence of God in our life. It enables us to see the presence of God in every event in our life. Thus, ultimately, our prayer of gratitude, our prayer of thanksgiving does not benefit God. It benefits us. We renew and profess our faith. Please all stand. I believe in one God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, earth of, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all, all ages, God from God, God light, light from light, true God from true God, God begotten and not made, made, consubstantial with the Father. Father. Through Him all things were made, for us men and for our, our salvation, salvation he came, came down, down from, from heaven, heaven, and by, and by the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit was the incarnate of the Virgin, Virgin Mary, Mary and became man. man. For our sake, sake he was crucified, was crucified under Pontius Pilate. Pilate. He, he suffered death and was buried, and, was buried, and rose, rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. scriptures. He, he ascended, ascended into heaven, heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the, Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I, and I look forward, forward to the resurrection, to the resurrection of the dead and, and the life, life of, of the world, world to come. come. Amen. Amen. Father, through, with, and in your Son, Jesus Christ, you enable us to give thanks to you, holy and genuinely. Thus, with grateful hearts, we approach you in supplication as we pray. Lord, grant us grateful hearts. Lord, grant us grateful hearts. May we, your church, work together for your kingdom, always and everywhere, in gratitude to your grace that sustains. We pray. Lord, grant us grateful hearts. Guide our national and local, local leaders so that they may work in gratitude to you. Help them realize that without you, everything they do or work for will be done in vain. We pray. Lord, grant us grateful hearts. We lift up to you our brethren, who belongs to indigenous groups and those living in extreme poverty. Move our hearts for the good of these brothers and sisters, so they, they too may be able to fully participate in the kingdom, in building up your kingdom. We pray. Lord, grant us grateful hearts. Embrace those who have gone before us into eternal communion with you. We pray. Lord, grant us grateful hearts. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. We pray. Lord, grant us grateful hearts. We also pray for our men and women in uniform, but especially the officers, personnel, and civilian human resource of the Philippine Army and their families, for their safety and protection as they fulfill their mandate, and also for their success, for the accomplishment of their mission. We also pray for all the sick, the sick and wounded soldiers, for their complete healing and recovery, and for the intentions of all those who ask for our intercession and those whom we promise to include in our prayer. We also remember and pray for all our departed brothers and sisters, for the eternal repose of the souls of Carmelita, Father, and the souls of all the soldiers departed, Father Nomer, and all the souls in purgatory. The work we beseech you, O Father, our heart, mind, and will, so that we may become grateful workers of your kingdom through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Our sponsors for this Mass are the Parish Pastoral Council, Eucharistic Ministers of the Holy Eucharist, and couples for Christ. Before the gifts we bring to you, bounty of the earth we see what Bless the work of our hands. Rich thee for this gifts at your command. Sun and moon and earth and wind and moon and earth and wind and rain. The words contain in every grain. Oh, God. 
battles and dreams of human Please all stand. Sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundation of the world and have arranged the changings of times and seasons, you formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. In the highest 
miss you. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving things broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took that chalice, once more gave you thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is that chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held as worthy to stand in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Oscar Jaime, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Stand. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we humbly pray.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. We offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for life everlasting. Amen. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. For an orderly reception of the sacred host, we will receive Holy Communion by row. Thank you. For all who long to see, in the 
Let us pray. Please stand. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for some announcements. We would like to remind everyone of the proper attire or dress code when participating in the Holy Mass or other celebrations inside the Church. The Eucharistic celebration is a sacred and very important occasion. Thus, everyone is urged to dress appropriately. When planning what to wear for church, we must bear in mind that we should be modest and decent. Men are advised to wear t-shirts or long sleeve shirts, polo shirt or collared shirts, jeans or slacks. Women are advised to wear blouse with sleeves, collared shirt or t-shirt, knee-length dress or long dress with sleeves, knee-length or long skirts. Sleeves are always a must. For those who will be coming to church in a sleeveless attire, usherettes will be around to offer shawls for your use for the duration of the Mass. Kindly return these shawls to our usherettes after the Mass. Thank you for your kind understanding and cooperation. We would like to invite everyone to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to follow our Facebook pages, Ang Sundalong Pari ng Philippine Army, and Post Chapel, St. Michael the Archangel, Philippine Army, for online daily Holy Mass, Gospel readings, reflections, and prayer for our soldiers and basic catechism. Our Mass schedule is as follows. Mondays to Fridays, 12 noon. Saturdays, 6.30 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. anticipated Sunday Mass. Sunday Mass schedules are as follows. 6 a.m., 9 a.m., 12 noon, 3 p.m., and 6 p.m. Thank you, and please all stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your head and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God always keep every adversity far from you, and in His kindness pour out upon you the gifts of His blessing. Amen. May God keep your hearts attentive to His words, that they may be filled with everlasting gladness. Amen. And so, may you always understand what is good and right, and be found ever hastening along in the path of God's commands, made co-heirs with the citizens of heaven. Amen. And may the Almighty God bless you and your families, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The holy sacrifice of the Mass has been offered. Go in peace to serve and love the Lord in one another. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. Palagpagan natin ating Panginoon.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. 